Hello, you guys. Welcome back to Let's Deal With It. All right. Get out your Bibles. When I tell you this um, once, the, once saved, always saved uh, teaching is not in God's word, it is not. Um, I'm more convinced than ever before that it is absolutely a doctrine of demons. I have mentioned in prior videos, no one is more clever and more cunning than the devil except for other devils and other demons, fallen angels, because demons aren't angels. They are disembodied spirits from the Nephilims, or from the angels who mix with human beings, women, human women, and created Nephilims. And in the flood, you all, they didn't all die. Many of them survived, and their spirits uh, came from their and uh, their Nephilim bodies, and they are possessing the bodies of human people. It's it's very deep. It's very deep. So, any time the Bible does warn us about doctrines of demons, and the prosperity gospel. That's one. I don't even know why we call it gospel because it, what it is is doctrines of demons. Ain't no gospel in it. I think it's amazing how people will take one word, one word, and make it the gospel, make it the uh, a canon scripture. Yeah. Anyway, you all, the Bible calls it doctrines of demons. It is not a gospel. The good news of the gospel is about the Holy Son of God, Jesus Christ, coming into the world to die for the sins of the whole world. So anything that deviates from that is doctrines of demons, okay? Oh, I'm going to make it crystal clear because I'm not going to stand before my holy Yahweh and, and know that I didn't do what he told me to do. I'm going to have very much peace about this. Woo! Glory, hallelujah. I just want you guys to know the strength that he's given me to keep going like this. You all, it's not me. If y'all knew the situations that I face I'm dealing with, you would say, oh my God, yes, this is the Lord. This is the Lord. So you all, I'm not going to let my problems, my trials and tribulations stop me from doing what God called me to do. Not even this pain in my foot, which thank you, Heavenly Father, it has subsided greatly. Oh, yes, it's nearly gone. Thank you, Lord. I'm not going to complain because it could be feeling like it did that day when I could cry. Oh, it was bad pain, you all. But see, everything in life is a test. You know how the thugs, when they be out in the world and they be riding hard, ride, die, and they be saying, I need me a ride or die chick with me. Well, you all, I'm a ride or die child of God. Come hella high waters. I pray his Holy Spirit keeps fire in me. And, and guess what? It's not him that can't keep the fire burning. It's us that has to come under this fire, submit to the fire of the Holy Ghost. And he sure enough will keep you going. Talking about an ever energy, energized bunny. Let me tell you something. Ain't no power like the power of the almighty God. And when I tell you all, that's what's strengthening me from day to day, moment to moment, second by second. Okay? I'm going to make it very clear who is the source of power in my life, irregardless of the things I face. And I'm, I'm having a test of staying in trust and faith that God got my bills. He got my rent. He got it all. As you, you think that that's not a burden, it is. And the devil, see, let me, let me, let me, let me show y'all something about Satan. If he can't use your children, let me, let me back that up. If he can't get you to drink and smoke and cuss and gossip and, 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 and uh, smoke, gus, smoke, cuss, gossip, drink, twerk, lie, if he cannot get you to do them things, you guys, he's going to use your children. He's going to use your spouse. And, and let me tell you, let me get my red pen. 
He will use your health and attack your pocketbook. Oh, yes. And he'll say, wow, you serving God, living right, and look at you struggling. Folks got plenty of money. Look at you. And you up there doing things for people, and look at you. Guess what? Look at me. Yes. When you see me, you're going to see King Jesus. Oh, yes. So you all, I'm not worried. Do I get concerned? I would be lying. Now, I used to worry. Keep it real and tell the whole truth. I used to worry. Oh, my God. I did, you all. I did. But I got so convicted. I got so convicted because every time the Lord came through for me, every time, right on time. I said right on time. So you all, this is my burden. This is my test to keep putting out these banger words. And I know they are because they're, they're really getting to people who think once saved, always saved. And I hope they do. I don't hope that they vex you. I hope they make you repent. And come to the Lord the way he say come to him. He said, they that worship God must worship him in truth and in spirit. Check if your spirit is really born again. Check if you worship in him in truth. Because the Bible says, Jesus said, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. So how that equates with me continuing in sin and and at the same time, simultaneously, holiness won't see God. That is one of the most ridiculous, hellish things I've ever heard. Jesus died to set us free from the power of sin. You hear me? And the devil know it. He know that we got the power to be free from temptation and sin. And I didn't say you won't ever be tempted, but temptation ain't a sin. The sin comes when we submit and choose to do the, temp do the sin of that temptation. You heard me? Yeah. It's time to get down to the nitty gritty. See, I keep saying it's easy to trust God when you got money in the bank, when you got a good job, got folks you can borrow money from, ask for help. That, and I'm not saying none of that is wrong. Oh, God, no. But I'm going to tell you this. It takes some show enough trust and faith and discipline to keep doing what God told you to do in spite of trials and tribulations. And you know what? Let me tell you something. My Bible says the Lord will deliver his children out of all their troubles. I said all. Okay? All means all. So when I get up and pray and sometimes cry about my son lost in California on them streets, homeless, hooked on crystal meth, Ain't seen him in over four years, maybe five now. Ain't talked to him in over two years. And when I did see him, the bottom of his eyelids is coming out of his eyeballs. <laughs> you all don't tell me about God and his mercy and his grace to keep going. I literally just came out of a manic depression, a manic depression. And you know what is so amazing? God would give me the strength to keep reading my Bible, praying. Now, there was days when I missed praying and even missed reading my Bible because I could barely get out of bed. But I had to get out of bed for my baby boy. I had to. I had to get out of bed for my own daughter. Okay. So I don't got time for people playing with God because I know he's real. I know he's real. Okay. Okay. You all, if you keep sinning, you're going to hell. And then God say he going to take hell and throw it into the lake of fire. So uh, keep sinning. 
but you won't say, I just didn't know. I didn't know about my soul still it need my soul still needed worked on and my character and personalities, things in my person. I just didn't know that. If if he bring you through this way, let's deal with it. The name he gave me, you ain't gonna have no excuse. And that's exactly why I pray, Lord, send souls that are thirsting and hungering after righteousness. Do you know that means a soul that wants to be right with God? Send souls that was not taught right. Send them this way. Okay? So, I want y'all to get out your Bible. We're going to pray first. Hallelujah. See, my Jewish pastor taught me three things, and I got it right on my refrigerator. Got it there. It's been there over, oh my God, se not seven years. I've been here three years. It's been on my fr refrigerator for uh, at least six, five years. Three things you can't fake. I said three things you can't fake. Peace, joy, and faith. You can't fake it. Either you got it or you don't. Peace, faith, and joy. These things are of the Holy Spirit. You, you read that one in the Bible? Them three things will never fail. Now, is our faith in trusting God strong in all areas? No. I, mine is mainly with my finances. I've just, you all, I'm not going to go there, but that's, that's my test. Now, some people's tests could be in their health. Some people's tests could be staying uh, sanctified and holy, which is sexually pure. Yeah. Yeah. See, I don't wrestle with that no more. Oh, you, you don't think that's powerful? I know it is. I, I don't care. I know it is. And does that mean I can't ever be tempted? You all, I'm not saying that. I'm trying to be honest and real and transparent and tell you that thing don't bother me no more. That's, that's profound. That is the working of the Holy Ghost. You heard me? Yeah. So I am rejoicing for these victories in my life. You see, this is what Jesus talking about the overcomers. Yes. The miss who he com coming for the overcomers. So you all let's pray because when you hear this, this get out your Bible, turn to ch uh, Matthew chapter 13, get out your Bible. Cause wait till you hear this. You go on know emphatically there was never no once saved, always saved. The only thing when you come to Jesus and you say the prayer of salvation, the prayer for the spirit man, because that's what he came to do. Give us a brand new spirit because spiritually all human beings are born dead. And if you're spiritually dead, that means you have no connection to your creator and he's not your father. He is still your creator because he made everything and everybody now, but he's not your father until you become born again in your spirit, man. And Jesus Christ does that all by himself. See, that's what y'all uh, once saved, always saved folks getting mixed up. See, when your spirit get born again, you got nothing to do with that. All you got to do with it, and even that part, is the Holy Spirit that draws us and, and helps us to see that we are sinners. He is the one that convicts us and say we need Jesus. We need the Savior. Not a Savior, because ain't but one Savior. Okay? So when you get born again in your spirit, man, it is you don't feel it. Now, some people have felt something of his presence. Glory, hallelujah. But most people have not. So what I'm trying to say is this. When your spirit man get born again, it is miraculous. It is the very doing of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. It is the very doing of the blood of Jesus. It is the very doing of the word of God, which is Jesus in flesh. It is God in flesh in his son. Okay? Now. After the spirit man is born again, miraculously, supernaturally, okay? 
Because that takes trust and faith to believe literally that the dead spirit in me, when I, when I confess that Jesus died on the cross, that I believe he is the living son of God, the holy living son of God, that Jesus died for my sins, that he, he, he died on that cross. And then the spirit of God raised him up out of that grave, out of that, that grave. You understand? All right. That is the business exclusively of God. Now, 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 let me tell you what don't change. Your physically body don't change and your soul don't change. It has to be worked on to become like Christ in character, in heart and in mind. I'll book it for you. The Bible says, and be ye transformed. Look up these words. See, look up the word transformed, okay, and renewed, and you'll see it's a, it's literally even that supernaturally done, but you still have to do the work of reading the word of God. And the heart is becomes new when you ask him to create in you. You know, like David said, creating me a clean heart and renewing me the right spirit. Even our own spirits born again still needs to be full of the Holy Spirit, you all. Okay, now the soul is jacked up. You know how some folks, they cuss real bad. They lie real bad. They got a lust demon. They got a greed demon. That's the soul. You hear me? That's our soul, man. And that thing needs saved sanctified and learned and taught how to live righteous and holy. See, the spirit is ready. The, I can book it for you. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And the soul is housed inside the body along with the spirit. The spirit and the soul lives on, but this body, oh, it's going to decay. It's going back in the ground. I'm awake. I'm awake. You all, the soul is jacked up. You say, well, what is my soul? This is what our soul is. It is your, it is your will, your desires, and your passions, your affections. The soul is connected to the will and the conscience even. I want you to think about it. See, that's why Jesus, the Bible says he's the lover of our soul. Yeah, I'm, I'm keeping keep my red pen for it's the blood. It's the blood of Jesus that washes and cleanses our souls, even our conscience. Through the Bible, through his word, it's living. Do y'all know the Bible is living? It is it's more alive than we are. That's why we living. <laughs> you know the universe and the moon and the stars is held up by the word of God. See, you want me to have a little talky talk with y'all so we can do better with our walkie walk. Sometimes the Lord just say, come, let us reason together. This is what I'm doing with you. I'm taking time to give you understanding through knowledge and wisdom from God, of God, about God. We are a triune being ourselves. Did you know that? Here's my physical body. And in the center of me is my spirit and my soul. I said we are triune ourselves. And the only thing that gets birth brand new is the spirit person who we really are. But then the spirit has to help you to work on the soul. And in your soul lives your will. Yes. That's why the Bible says if a man is willing, 
and obedient. Because you can be willing and never get around to obeying God. <laughs> See that? You got to, there's a man in the Bible that says, I'll show you my faith by my works. Because faith without works is dead. So you can be willing to do what's right, but you got to go on and do right. You got to do right. You know how you say he a can't get right, she a can't get right. Because folks don't want to do right. Think about it, you all. People say, you know, I smoke marijuana for my pain, for my nerves, for stress, for anxiety. Listen, you all. If somebody is using real, I'm talking about the real herb. I'm pausing for cancer, bone marrow problems, which is cancer or lupus, and problems in their body. I don't have no problem with that, and neither does God. I know He don't, cause He the one made it. That's the herb made from the Lord. But now, 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 let's talk about it. Anytime you getting high off of marijuana, listen. Stop deluding yourself. You like getting high. And any time you use something day in and day out, that's called an addiction. And that's a demon. So if you want to delude yourself, covering it up, saying it's, it's for my anxiety and my nerves and my cancer. Okay. All right. That's all I'm going to say. So you all, you brothers and sisters that's living with a man or a woman and you're not married, you already playing house, going to get married. And don't say I told you to get married to them. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to book it for you. See, one thing y'all all, all going to say who come here, that girl books everything she say from God's word and it ain't her pr private own interpretation. The Bible said it is better to marry than to burn with lust. So marriage is honorable. Yes, if you're burning with lust, at least have the intelligence and the decency and the wherewithal to get married. See, I'm going to always book it because if I can't book it, it's crooked. And for anybody else. So you all shacking up and living with a man or a woman and you not lawfully married, let that trumpet blow. Let it blow. You ain't going nowhere. And if you study, keep drinking. And I, listen, you all, I know there is some pain. Let me tell you something. See, it's God want me to have a little talky talk. I used to say, and it was prideful. Oh, see, I can to tell on myself. I don't know how people could do drugs and drink. It just makes things worse. And guess what happened to me? A few things. Number one, the first thing was my son getting out there homeless and addicted to crystal meth. Okay? And I don't know if he dead or alive right now. I don't know that. But I believe in all that is in me that he is still alive. Okay? All right, the Lord have talked to me through my dreams about my son. And in the past, he've, he'll have somebody say, I saw him. He's back in North Hollywood, California. Okay, so I'm trying to show you guys something. I used to say, Lord, I don't understand how people could abuse drugs and drink alcohol and even smoke cigarettes. I'm, I'm being honest. But you all, when I tell you I understand how some pain can drive you to drinking, doing drugs, and smoking cigarettes, and even sexing out. Oh, yeah, yeah. And you say, Marsha, have you done those things? I want you to know. Now, I, I'm going to be real. I, I wasn't going to choose to do drugs or smoking. Mm -mm. I just don't have the... I just don't like them things because as a little girl, I couldn't stand them. I'm just being honest. 
But uh, sexing out, oh, that would have been my drug of choice. Oh, yes. And you say, well, Marcia, did you end up doing that? No, but I still was in fornicative relationships. See what I mean? So I thank God that it did not take me over where I just said, no, uh -uh, I'm, going, I'm going to ease this pain one way or, the, or another. You see, it ain't nothing but the grace and mercy and keeping power of the almighty God that I didn't do that. That's not no power of my own. Are you kidding me? Uh-uh. Mm-mm. And you say, well, now, Marsha, you said you masturbated. Yes, I did. I would masturbate before and after my cycle. It was not something that I just, it was something I did occasionally. And I thought I was all right with it because I didn't do it all the time. So I guess what I did, what we all do, I justified it. I said, God, I, I'm not addicted to this. I'm human. And the Lord said, really? And see, when he talked to me like that, I tell you, it's like a parent looking at their child like, you better stop this. And you know, you say, well, what made you fear God about it? I was going to tell you. I heard about three testimonies about women and men who bust hell wide open because of masturbating. That was a real motivator for me. <laughs> that was, see, that was the fear of God that got on me. I said, oh, I'm not doing that no more. See, I thought it was okay because let's say out of a month, I probably did it three, five times. And in my mind and my deceitful and wicked heart, I was justifying it because I said, now, Lord, I, this ain't no addiction now, Lord. I am human. Oh, really? And that's when he sent them testimonies about masturbation and folks going to hell because they were masturbating. It don't matter if you're chronic or not. It's a sin. And then the Lord showed me it's an unclean spirit. So you want to be connected to demons and unclean spirits? Talking about Jesus is your Lord and your Savior? Okay. So, yes, I want to thank you, Jesus. And then he reminded me years ago, my son was still in my stomach. I was married, and I was carrying my baby boy, Judah. And out of nowhere, I heard the words, what will you be doing when Jesus come? What will you be doing when Jesus come? Now you can fill that in, fill in the blank with anything you want to fill it with. Masturbating, looking at pornography, drinking, smoking, and twerking. Gossiping on the phone, lying, stealing, and cheating. Just go on and fill in the blank with whatever your vice is. And I want you guys to look up the word vice. It's going to blow your mind. I wrote it down. I don't. I think I did read it one time on one of my um, videos. It ain't nothing nice. It's just another word for sin. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you all, I'm coming right back on with the teaching, Matthew 13. We're going to read the whole chapter. You getting ready to see, we got to get the sin out of our life. When Jesus was brought that prostitute, Mary Magdalene, here, here you go, once saved, always saved folk. When they ran that woman to Jesus because they was chasing after her. They was going to stone her to death. I do believe when Jesus was be bending down, writing in the dirt, I think he was writing some of these sins. I, I really believe that. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
I heard someone say that, and I must say I agree. Because he said, let ye without sin cast the first stone. They had to drop them rocks. And then he told that woman, go and sin. This, this right here, what you've been doing, Mary, do it no more. Go and sin no more. So you once saved, always saved, keep sinning. Because if Mary Magdalena was here right now, she'd help you. And she'd be preaching and teaching the same thing I'm teaching right now. Mary Magdalena was changed. She met the master face to face. The holy son of Yahweh, God Almighty. You think she went back to tricking and, and hoeing? I know she didn't. I know she didn't. <laughs> That's why most of y'all ain't had no encounter with the living son of God. Mm -mm. And maybe you have and you've regressed or relapsed. All you got to do is repent. That's all you got to do is come on back. The prodigal son did. But uh, once saved, always saved, huh? The Bible said he came to his right mind. Okay, you guys, I love you, and I'll be back.